there's some Revelator songs that I'm like, man, we got to bring those back. But we've done so many songs and albums. There's like so much to choose from that we, I guess we don't think about it all the time. We need to get you a really good slide player in Nashville and you guys need to cover a Derek Truck song. You know, he told me Susan wrote the song, which he, he was proud of. He said that with great pride. You know, the way you say nice things about your family. <laughs> from the first note with Tedeschi Trucks, they just blow you away. Yes, we will. I wouldn't argue with anyone that said that says that could be my favorite song on on I Am the Moon. He, you know, signs my ticket, and I look over at Susan. I say, Susan, would you sign it too? And she goes, Oh, oh heck yeah! Kenny calls me and was like, Hey man, what are you doing? I was like, Nothing. And he was like, Derek wants to record some tuba stuff. I say, When do you want to do it? And he was like, Let's do it Wednesday. It's midnight Harlem, um, and it just. It caught our attention, man, and we started diving deep, and we're like, okay, uh, we got to see these guys. What's up? Welcome to the unofficial Tedeschi Trucks podcast. This is episode number 149, and I am Adam Choit. To follow this show, it's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram. And on YouTube, just search Tedeschi Trucks uh, Podcast. If you're watching, you're already there, so please be sure to subscribe, give the show likes, shares. Uh, comments, all that is appreciated. I really got that thing on on autopilot now. But uh, I'm at Adam Choi on Instagram and Twitter if you want to follow me. Uh, subscribe on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. I'll definitely put out an audio version of this episode probably later tonight or tomorrow. I'll get that up too. Uh, for people who just like to listen and don't want to look at me, I understand that. Uh, I understand that. Um, uh, TedeschiTrucksPodcast.com for everything related to the show. That'll get you all the links uh, for social media, how to listen, how to watch. AdamTroit.com for all my personal stuff. Um, thank you, everyone, for checking out the Gabe Dixon interview conversation episode. That was so special. I'll keep saying it. Thank you to Gabe. Thank you, TTB. That was amazing. I'm still thinking about that, still thinking about, still processing it, thinking about all the things that I should have asked, wanted to ask. Uh, could have asked. I wanted to ask what his mom thought about when he first started to play with Paul McCartney, like because she was a big Beatles fan, I know, and 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 I'm sure that meant a lot to her and and, and whatnot. But there's just so many things that I could have asked and wanted and would have wanted to. But it was such an amazing conversation, and thank you for the kind words and and such positive feedback from everyone who checked uh, that out. Um, Tedeschi Trucks Band has been in Australia for uh, last cup last cup uh week now i guess the last week or so so i got a lot of shows there in the last uh, week uh byron bay blues fest a couple of uh nights the 30th and 31st of march melbourne uh wednesday the third sydney uh april 5th and it's april 5th in the states right now so somehow i made this happen we got a couple of people from australia to join us and recap ttb who hasn't posted all that much on there if at all really um so I don't know. We'll do our best with the set lists and 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 pictures and 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 the recap here. But um, yeah, I think I think we can get into it. Um, I got Stephen, an American who's overseas, and and guy who's I believe Australian, a, a, a local from I want to say Melbourne. Did he say he was from? He's nodding in in the waiting room. Perfect. But let's bring in Stephen. Let's bring in Guy. A couple of first uh, first timers on the show, and we're gonna get into recapping. Tedeschi Trucks Band in Australia. What's up, guys? Good day, Adam. Hello, everyone. Oh, what's cooking? We did it. We got it. We got the connection. I see or hear you. We got all the things. Um, why don't we just get right into it? And I'll go around the room, and, and you guys can tell me where the hell you are, where the hell you're from, and kind of a little bit about your backstory and how you got into TTB, and then we'll get into the, uh, the shows. Why don't we start with Steven? Yeah, thanks for having me, Adam. It's fun to be oh, here. Sure. I uh, come to you from Brisbane, Australia. Um, I'm originally from Greenville, South Carolina, and currently live in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, my dad really uh, got me into TTB. He got me into a lot of music, raised me up on you know the Allman Brothers and Government Mule. So natural uh, progression into TTB and kind of following Derek and Susan in the band. And your, does your dad play uh, guitar or instruments or at all? Is he musically inclined? He does not. He does not. Uh, yeah, I was chatting with him. He basically booked you for this for this podcast, <laughs> essentially. And he was he was he was my connection. Your father seemed like a very nice guy. We were chatting and chatting about music. 
of course. So you're overseas temporarily and you're studying. If you wanted to tell me about that, because it's kind of interesting, the background. Yeah. If you so, want to share. Um, I'm in uh, residency uh, training in orthopedic surgery. And part of my program, we have an elective rotation where we can uh, find something to do that's productive and educational and a lot of people go abroad either on, you know, do some mission work or, or find well-renowned surgeons abroad and spend some time with them. And so that's kind of what I did. Found a surgeon in Brisbane uh, that was willing to let me come hang out for a few weeks and I uh, was able to tack on attending Byron Bay Blues Fest before I got started. That's so, that's so cool. And it's, and it's going well with the, with your studies and, and I guess apprenticeship of sorts. Yeah, it's been awesome. Very, very cool. Um, and you were at the very first show at Byron Bay, the first uh, TTB show set, whatever. We'll get we'll get into it. Correct. Yes, yeah. Saturday, March thirtieth, their first night. Gotcha. And what about you, guy? Where are you located? And, and uh, how'd you how'd you get into to TTB? Uh, uh, hey, Adam and everyone. I am currently. I'm in my hotel room in in Sydney. In in. Um, uh, Australia, we have a bit of a tradition of uh, uh, also saying the um, Aboriginal nation uh, of the lands in which I live or, or, or uh, am coming to you right now, which is the uh, Gadigal people of the Eora nation on their lands in Sydney. But I live in, in Melbourne, which is Wurundjeri land, as we call it here. Um, and I've been living in Australia for about 17 years now. I'm originally from uh, Palestine, Israel. Um, and I am. Uh, I, I first came to Australia 17 years ago when I uh, started uh, uh, to do a um, um, started to study, and, and I did uh, uh, public health, and I um, work as a public health researcher and and and, uh, and, in, and in public health policy. Uh, but when I first came to Australia, one thing I wanted to say is uh, that was in early 2007, and before I even had my visa confirmed i saw that a few days after i was gonna land eric clapton is touring and i knew that he has a young guitarist called derek trucks in his band so i bought the ticket to see eric clapton with derek trucks before i even had my australian visa confirmed <laughs> so um I, I i've been uh listening to music from a young age and i've been following live music uh really that's that's uh what i love to do in my life and that's the that's the main thing that i dedicate to my time when i'm not working and all of that and a lot of my holidays overseas, I plan around live music. So I, I did get to see Tedeschi Trucks band uh, uh, um, a couple of times in the US. Um, and it's just, you know, the, the, the passion for music is something that I, I put a lot of uh, uh, time and energy in, and and it's something that really sustains me on, on, on uh, a few different sort of levels. So I've been following Tedeschi Trucks band since the start. I've been following Derek Trucks. Uh, uh, and a little bit, Susan Tedeschi, you know, before they they uh, united their bands and all of that stuff. So, yeah, um, goes back a lot. And I have to watch myself because once I start to talk about this sort of stuff, I have a tendency to just keep talking. I think you're in the right place for that, though. I think that's the, I think I, you're definitely in the right place for that. To Stephen, when did you say you said your father was always into the music and just kind of got into it? When uh, did you were you kind of at in in the uh in the Tedeschi Trex band world as well, since kind of the beginning, because of your father just introducing you to Derek and Susan? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I'm not exactly sure when I first heard them, but I think the first time we saw them live was in 2014. So a couple years into the, to the band. Um, but you know, my dad has stories of seeing Derek when he was, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. So he's kind of known about him and his music for a long time. Gotcha. Do you do do you happen to have the either of you guys have the set list from or anyone out there have the set list from the March thirtieth show? Oh. <laughs> Andy, by any chance? I don't. I haven't been able to find it either. I uh, looked. Yeah, that's that's right. I'm sure you remember a handful of the songs, and it's okay that we don't have to go song by song per se or anything like that. But why don't you tell me? I'll give Stephen the floor and just kind of give me the broad overview of the of the festival what it was all about and and arriving and 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 the venue and and just tell me the story of going to see ttb at the at uh, the byron bay blues fest and we'll we'll get into the music too of course as well 
Sure. Uh, Blues Fest was awesome. This is the 35th anniversary, I believe. Uh, so they've been going strong for a long time in the same uh, location, I think. Um, there are four stages. Um, each had tents with, uh, you know, places to, to sit and standing room, you know, at the front of the stage, which I thought was awesome. It was kind of um, a different setup from some other festivals I've been to in the U.S. Uh, where not, you know, not every stage has is covered. Not every stage has covered area for the audience. Not every stage has seating for the audience, but that was all, all present at Blues Fest um, and was really cool uh, since you're, you know, kind of there for 12 plus hours of the day. It's nice to have plenty of places to sit and, and check everything out. Um, awesome transportation in and out of Blues Fest. Uh, they have, you know, buses that pick up from multiple locations in and around the site um, and we'll take you there and then take you back to those same spots after all the shows are over. Um, camping on site as well for, uh, for patrons who want to do that. Maybe Guy can speak to this later, but from what I've observed, it seems like Australians are like professional campers. Like there was some sweet setups out there um, and people there for like the whole weekend, all four days, uh, just going, you know, seeing live music all day, every day. Um, TTB uh, was the last show on that Saturday night on the Mojo stage. Uh, Snarky Puppy was before them. Um, my first time seeing uh, Snarky Puppy, they were they were awesome as well. Um, so it was a it was a great day. I got to see Taj Mahal, um, Almond Betts, Family Revival, uh, some uh, introduced to some new Australian artists. So highly recommend for anybody who wants to come over and check it out in the future. Yeah, that's definitely a benefit of going to festivals. You get exposed to different music, and if you already know the music, there's something about it seeing music live is if it's a band you haven't seen before that makes you fall in love with the music and then want to go back and go through their disc discography on youtube and spotify and maybe even purchase some of their albums and all and all that for sure but you were going steven to see ttb correct and and it just happened to be a festival more or less yeah pretty much uh, i mean i i was going to attend blues fest if the the lineup was appropriate and obviously ttb you know put the lineup over the top to to want me to get there um so something interesting i guess about seeing tedeschi trucks band when i talk to fans who who who've been to shows whether at either at festivals with other acts and some other contacts opening for another band i'm always curious to see fan reaction from fans other than the hard the hardcores is there what was what was the reaction i mean i mean sometimes it's it's just really shocking on the most positive way hearing susan's voice and derek's guitar and a slight guitar and then the rest of the band you know that it's a similar reaction as well but i'll let you respond to that if you can yeah definitely it seemed everybody was having a great time um lots of crowd interaction participation you know i was thinking about it during the show um we're super fortunate in the states so we could go see TTB, 10, 12, you know, you can see them a great number of times any given year. Um, but if they only come to Australia, you know, once every couple of years and they play, you know, four or five shows while they're over here, you might not get to see them very often. Um, so there were a lot of people that uh, were were hyped to see them um, and, and kind of came to Blues Fest for that opportunity. Um, like I said, because they might not be back over here again for a couple years. So that's the vibe I got just reading some comments on on social media from people who were at these shows, and I'm guessing you're native to Australia, just like really appreciative and super excited and 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 enthusiastic about going to these shows. And just I could feel it. It was something. It was a, a it's a little bit of a different energy from someone and from a group of people and from people individuals who haven't like had the opportunity to see TTB every year or like I complain, you know, we complain, Oh, the West coast doesn't get enough shows. They don't come to Portland, Seattle or whatever my Midwest West coast state is as, as Arizona, as much as we'd, we'd like to, but like, yeah, what if you live in Australia and Japan or a place that they haven't been like music is universal. So like people in other countries love Tedeschi trucks band just as much as I do. You don't have to be from Jacksonville, Boston, or New York City, or 
Los Angeles or American or whatever the case may be to love this band. You know, it's it's a universal language, uh, certainly. Um, I guess we can dive into a little bit of the music. What do you remember about the show and, and jumps out at you? Sure. Um, from the start, they uh, I thought it was interesting. They everybody came out but Susan and they kind of got a little groove going. I was not anything I've heard them play before. Um, but you know, just kind of the same little riff over and over again, bringing uh, everybody on. Uh, I'm not you know sure they were kind of figuring out the stage and the sound and making sure they liked everything, but you know, you, I'm used to kind of Derek and Susan leading everybody out, the house lights going down, the place going crazy. Um, and the same thing happened this time, except no Susan. And then they, they kind of got this riff going, got settled in. And then, then Susan came out and the, you know, the place went crazy again. Woman, so. woman to woman, woman to woman was the song. I think I'll, I'll, I'll put the pieces together. You <laughs> remember what you described Perfect. and, and me and the chat and guy, well, we can fill in whatever song we'll put, we'll piece this. Out. <laughs> no, it's all good. But yeah, that's that. I love how they do that. And then Susan, it's Susan gets her moment. She gets her shine. She gets the cheer. And that always shines through. Um, even just listening back to sometimes there's fan recordings of these live shows when they go into woman to woman, the crowd really goes nuts. First when Susan appears and then again when she opens her mouth and sings. As this does for when everyone gets their first verse. It's such a cool song because everyone, in addition to Susan, gets their shine in that song, especially the vocalists, of course. You know, it's it's a great introduction to to DT to TTB to start a show with, certainly. No doubt, it was it was awesome. What else? Uh, what else do you remember? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't have time. If anyone's got the set list or a link to it, I was looking through a few places for it, but I, I did see um, people say that they played a completely different set than the second night. So that's another clue of songs that they didn't play. <laughs> if you want to play that game, right? Yeah, they um, they played. Uh, Pasquan and you know, you know, in a lot of, a lot of like two set nights, they'll kind of take a break after that, or that'll kind of be the set break. And obviously they just kept rolling right through uh, the set list after that. But uh, everybody was, was loving that. Obviously it's amazing live. You get the drummers going and everything. So. For this type of festival, I guess there is a there is a certain amount of jam element to it. So no one's like totally caught off guard when they go into like a Pasaquan, which is like a 15, 20 plus minute thing. Like this is the right place for because sometimes I wonder like, oh, maybe they're not you are not going to get a Pasaquan because they can't play as long a set if they're playing a shorter set or they're playing something for, you know, where they're trying to maybe have a little bit more like mainstreamy appeal or like, you know, maybe we're going to play, get a few more songs versus like eating up a big chunk of our set with Pasaquan. But it's such an essential part of what TTV is that even when they don't play Pasaquan, you might get a, uh, a tease from it or you're going to, you're going to get a dreams or some kind of epic instrumental or, or an epic type song from TTV. Like the epic aspect of this band, like is present in every set. Every 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 show at least. Definitely, and I think you know, back to what we were saying earlier, not playing as many shows in Australia as they do elsewhere. But since they're playing two nights back to back, maybe that kind of gave them the the freedom to work it in that first night, knowing they uh, they could still get through a lot of music in two nights. That's another thing. I, I'm I'm going all over the place in my brain, but I could have asked Gabe. I didn't ask Gabe when I talked to him about uh, Pasaquan. That would have been a good question because he's obviously part of the recording. Is it's it must have been a very special thing to just you know record just a five member you know TTB thing. But uh, I'll let Stephen whatever if, if, whatever whatever memories jump out at you continue to to share. Um, yeah, I can tell a, a story. This guy in front of me, um, um, got to meet Derek at his hotel before the, before the show. Um, he was, you know, freaking out, um, about meeting him and just, uh, telling, telling us a story there before the show got started. His guitar player, um, was talking to Derek about trying to incorporate some, some slide songs into his, 
his um, band's set list for the the gigs they play. And Derek told him, you know, just hang out right here, wait a second, and went and brought him back one of his signature slides, uh, signed it, gave it to the guy. Um, so just a great story um, about, you know, Derek and the band, and they're all super kind people and have interactions with fans like that all the time. And I have conversations about these interactions all the time and they never get old. And like, they're so fresh and so special to every like person who has a story like this. And I think that's, that does keep it fresh for like Derek and Susan. I think, I mean, they're super nice people and super generous with their time, but there might, there is something to be said. I feel like for everyone's faces lighting up when they get a slide or a pick or a set list, especially cause like, it just means so much to like it really, people really want these things you know, it's not, a, it's really isn't about the monetary value. I, I don't think when you talk to a Tedeschi Trucks fan who wants a slide or a pick or a set list, or whatever, it's not about that. We know this, this is not like, uh, I don't know. Well, they're, they're alive for one thing. Like it's not, it's, it's, it's a personal collectible than it is more than like an actual like monetary thing. And I'm sure these things have value and are only going to go up in value once people who got their head in the sand or just don't know like how amazing this band is and like they are legends i yell that at shows sometimes i will yell the l word at this band while they're playing because they they need to know that and they need to hear that or at least i i think so like because they're right up there for me with like greg and Dwayne and all the bands from the 60s and 70s and clapton and and when you hear susan's voice it's just as powerful as any you know, female soul singer from many eras. Like they need, they get, they need to get their due. They are getting their due, but like I'm rambling. No, I agree. It's, I think it's awesome that there's, you know, such a collection of talent all together on stage every night, uh, you know, every, you could take any individual member of the band and, and put them, put them up there as a solo project and they would, shine and be successful but that the fact that they get to do it all together and and each contribute to this thing as a whole is is awesome never gets old for sure anything else from from byron bay i'm looking i'm gonna try to get a uh if i can get a photo here pulled up from the uh the encore calls at the end of the set were were pretty powerful Every place was going crazy um when they when they walked off um Susan and Gabe uh, came back. I was kind of making my way through the crowd at this point. Didn't want to miss the bus out of there um, and did a, a duet and then brought the whole band back um, and did Space Captain, brought the house down. Um, it was great. As it always does bring the house down. Did, did you get a uh, a trombone solo, trombone, Derek, Derek, uh, Elizabeth, uh, trombone action back and forth there at the yeah. end? Yep. The crowd sure. always goes goes nuts for that. That's just so powerful. I capture that on my 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 Tedeschi Trucks podcast Instagram at the final uh the final beacon show of the the beacon run. That was just such an amazing like I don't know how I was able to do it and what made what compelled me to actually because I don't really film a ton of stuff, but I'm like, I'm gonna try to get this and I got it all the way to Susan, like really getting the crowd into it and then she swings it to mark and swings it to alicia probably at the end i'm guessing for for you as well like just such a like they always there's always a little bit left it's like one more tedeschi trucks band thing one more derek note one more susan volk give me one more one more you know sound one more sound before the road basically yeah i'm sure the crowd went went nuts for that what was the what was the vibe like i guess after the show or people like well yeah, you speak speak <clears throat> speak to it it's a typical experience uh post every show for me you know everybody just kind of basking in the after show glow of of getting their faces melted off and and experiencing ttb everybody was all in had a great time I feel like we're all like more emotionally exhausted. Like it's like a whole, it's like takes a lot of energy, emotional energy out of us, like from a fan, out of the fan from the beginning to the show to the end of a show. Plus we're drinking and eating and our adrenaline's going and all this stuff too. 
but i feel like the bat is almost like more chill about it. it's like they just do this every night they're like, yeah we're, we're done we're hanging out we're getting on the bus it's almost like so matter of fact and i know the music moves them as well and you know it's super special to them and obviously but like to us it's it almost seems like more of an exhausting journey whereas they have to like i don't know just i guess remain present is is kind of a is something to be said she sang uh all says she, uh, she sang i can't make you love me at this this show do you recall that uh steven yeah i can't uh can't place it in this in the set yeah i'm just, my, my, in my memory um but yeah let's see the, that's easter rising a spiritual almost religious experience what they have given produced shared never experienced anything like it in five decades of live music i sent off the link here in the chat he may he may join us uh i i uh, i guess he was in australia just he was just at saturday oh just saturday night is when they played uh i can't make you love me as part of the encore you were so the 30th was that was Friday. That was Friday, I guess. No, that was Saturday night. That was Saturday. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm losing so must have my been, mind. Uh, maybe her and Gabe first before Space Captain. Is this is this a good shot of uh, what Byron Bay kind of looks like? This looks like a painting. I think it's just a, a low resolution thumbnail from Wikipedia. But is that is that kind of where it was located? Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, I didn't have uh, that kind of perspective on the place, but um, you know, in a wide, expansive uh, area, uh, the stages were separated by um, a good bit, and uh, you know, all the camping and, and parking on site. The rain kind of dampened the the rain on Friday. Dampened a lot of people driving there to park on Saturday, the day that I went, um, but still uh a packed house yeah i'm gonna bring in Alf here and we'll find out what show he was at and i'll be first time connecting with him as well what's up my friend hello hello sorry for the technical glitches good to see oh. you guys good to oh see it's you all guys. good where Die where hard. are you where are you from where are you at where are you from originally how'd you get into um, ttb which shows like, where you're at yeah like steven and guy i'm not originally from australia i'm originally from hamburg germany came to Australia 2001 for work, uh, like Guy. I've worked here in the health sector in the last six years looking after the after my kids. And um, I live in the Byron Bay area. We call it the Northern Rivers, or as Guy said, Ganjalang Nation. Um, yeah, there's a 60,000 year history in Australia of, um, of peaceful coexistence of about 500 different nations, a bit like in the States that, of course, got tried to get crushed um, and they're just reclaiming reclaiming their land and reclaiming their, their title and their, their language. So um, yeah, so the festival stood on on, on Banjalang Nation and that's where, where I live at the moment as well. It's a beautiful, the, the shot was very nice. Could, that was the easternmost point of Australia. You could see the lighthouse just out in the back and it's a famous surf beach. So uh, yeah, Jack Johnson and um, and so forth. I mean, all the all the guys. Blues Fest used to be in town, so you you used to be able to just hop in the ocean. It's one of the most beautiful beaches in Australia. So they only moved out to the festival site from 10, 15 years ago. Um, Tedeschi Trucks was a total fluke. I'm listening to our local radio station, and there's a an ice cream kid. He calls himself. He does a long, strange trip. So every Thursday night, he plays music from um, from the Grateful Dead. <laughs> Nothing but. And he mentioned Tedeschi Trucks band, and I thought, well, if he mentions them, they must be quite unusual and quite good. And and uh, I met a few musicians at the festival who said that they specifically came to see them, just them and uh yeah so i went and i was blown away i've never seen anything like it that it's as if they combined my 56 years of musical taste and experience and lifted it to a level that i've never experienced before each and every one of them and of course derek and susan on top of it all so i've never experienced anything like it never i can't what? place it wow so that was your first tedeschi trucks band first show ever. and and you were not familiar with the band at least i've not never heard their name never heard you just their happened music. not to know, not complete to know virgin them. and completely yeah they, that they, is I, that is some, 
that's cool. That's something that I wanted to do was actually bring on somebody who was went to a first time show. Obviously, people might not be comfortable talking about it, but but yeah. wow, like that's 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 amazing. That I appreciate your, your topping on the call as well. Like I assume I'm just talking to some crazy fan who wants to talk TTP, not a first timer. Like so, so you were so you love this music or were, or were so captivated by it that you that you were willing to come on a podcast to talk about it. Well, I, for a, me, it wasn't a musical experience, not purely. I mean, of course, their music is better than, or as a, they combine every style. I, I mean, I can't place it. I'm, I'm not a musician, so. Um, but it was a it was a spiritual experience for me. I mean, I I walked in and and well, the last two years haven't been the best of my life. Let's put it that way. And I walked out, and I was a different man. So I I've, I've never experienced anything quite like it. So, and it was lucky because Saturday, the encore, 45 minutes, and it wasn't, I think a lot of people don't know them. So it wasn't even full. So, Guy, you were there on Saturday, is that right? Or was it Steve? My, I, I mean, no, that. no, not me. Yeah. Oh, Steve, you were there. Yeah. So it, 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 it was a, it, it was a small audience. And yet, um, Sunday, of course, it was packed. I, I think words getting round and, um, yeah um the the amount of energy the amount of quality of each and every player so whoever took like the ability to to fade away and let others stand in the spotlight and listen and i can't even i, I don't even know where to begin but even the back the backups are every each and every musician in that band could have their own band without a doubt and they would succeed without a doubt and then they play together a 12 piece and the way they listen to each other and the way they throw the balls around. I, woo, yeah. Dude, you talk, see, I, the thing is about the passion about these fans, whether you have been following them since before they were Tedeschi trucks band, when they were just Derek trucks and Susan Tedeschi, Derek trucks band, or like, you know, a little bit more recently, or like you literally just discover them people always seem to be able to speak with the same amount of passion and articulation as to why they're so great. Every single thing you said just about has been echoed or said uh, on this podcast in the last 150 episodes or already in this episode itself. Like when, when I forget what something Steven said, that was ex basically exactly what you said about, about the band and something about their sound. But yeah, that, it's, there's such a, it is like a transformative religious spiritual experience. And that's definitely something that I speak to all the time. And like, I'm sure there's some fans out there or some people who are like, Oh, where have you been? How come you didn't discover them earlier? Or things like having like a little bit of attitude about it. But like you only f know when you know, when you know it and find out when you find out, like there was a period of time where like, I didn't really know who to Derek trucks or Susan Tedeschi was. I kind of heard the name Derek trucks. I knew the Allman brothers music, but never really, dove into it beyond their hits it 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 didn't really uh what's the word but it didn't hit me in the same way it did later in li li life life I, I i guess so it's like when you discover you discover it like i said i talked to fans who found this band in 2018 who found them and these musicians in the 90s who just discovered them over this past weekend it's like people love love this band and, and it's instant also like it's totally instant how far have you i mean you you literally just went to the shows but like have you dove into all have you dove into like their catalog or live music or well YouTubing? the last week I've, I've listened to nothing but i've ordered the whole complex cd i've spent my last savings on their shit it's almost ridiculous but it, because it's been such a big i mean steven and guy you guys have been onto it for a long time and and you probably you said that Guy, you said you 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 create your life around music, and Stephen, it sounds like you're coming from a music musical family, and you you've got direct connection there. So maybe you can understand. But it was like a door opening that I didn't even know was there, and as if I'm suddenly, I'm, I have listened to music all my life. I've got a lot of CDs, a lot of records. I, I listen to a lot of stuff. I love all sorts of music across all areas, from classical to hip hop, and yet I've never ever come across anything that i can possibly compare it's really it's for me it's the pinnacle of all my musical taste that has come together in one band and and the craftsmanship and the message and the lyrics and and the live performance is yeah i 
I'm still buzzing. I'm, honestly, my life, it feels as if my life has changed. I don't know what Steve and, and Guy feel. I, I'd love to hear from them because they were there as well. Um, yeah. Can I, um, can I yeah, say we, something on that? Yeah, I was just going to say, we can, we can start, we can jump around and talk about the... Oh, the sorry, I didn't, know the, I didn't know the format. Sort of, no, there, 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 the there, format. There, there, there is no format. I just, I just don't want to be like, hey, th two hours went by and we haven't talked at all about Melbourne or Sydney. So it to totally, this is like, so jump, ar the, jump the around, like, I'm going to only... let you guys talk. Yeah, they're only yet to come, the Sydney shows. So we only got the Melbourne show that has happened. We had one Sydney show yesterday. Oh, that was already yesterday. Okay, it was Saturday. Okay, good, good. Oh, yeah, I, I, I shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, where where should we go from here? Well, I guess what else do we, anything else we want to cover of about the about either of the, uh, the Byron Bay shows? I do have the set list from... Uh, the, from what is this night one or night two which one do i got here Ooh, let's see um, bear with me here i got it from the setlist.fm this was uh is this night oh, one wow. or is this is night two? To get, it, get it into more focus or do i need to put my glasses on oh yeah okay maybe, thank you. maybe a little bit <laughs> uh, column a and column b <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, here, yeah, I'll read it out. Here, my dear, playing with my emotions. No, 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 everybody. I can read it. I can read it. I, well, yeah. for the audio listeners, oh, everybody oh, got to change oh. some time. Take me as I am. Anyhow, Bell Bottom Blues, why is love got to be so sad? It ain't fair. Uh, made up mind. How blue can you get? Midnight Harlem. I want more. And I, I think the encore, the, was there an encore? No. 45 the, minutes. Yeah. What, so was there, there was no encore for this? No, I'm, I'm guessing they would have also done Bex Bolero because that seems to be what they do with I Want More these days because they yeah. did that. That was the only thing that repeated between Melbourne and Sydney Night One was the finishing of the main set with I Want More into Bex Bolero. Which yeah, is that's, great. it's been mostly Bex Bolero. Soul Sacrifice a couple of times this year, but yeah, the can't go can't go wrong with 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 either of those. Yeah, this is just a stellar stellar set list and uh and i i kind of didn't expect them to add any i mean you never know with this band but i don't think i i've come across any new additions to uh you know set, set list from this year at these australia shows all the all the the, the newer songs are bringing the stuff back like yeah, I, I kind of expected that, but this is just super duper stellar. And to I, it, would, it always just jumps out at me seeing the "It Ain't Fair" and and the Alicia moment. It's just really a show stopping moment for her, for the band, and 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 for Derek to play. Like I think it's almost like we're getting so we all get so caught up. We're getting so caught up in it being an amazing Alicia moment and vocal that we're almost forgetting like the whole Derek. Not forgetting how could we, but like. It's such a, a a special Derek moment too for them to add a new Dwayne Almond Brothers legacy song into the Tedeschi Trucks band uh, set list because they're him, you know, in terms of keeping the Almond Brothers alive. There's a lot of great talented bands that I watch online and offline in person and and covers and tribute bands and and talented guitar players who play the Almond Brothers music, but Something about when Derek plays it, it's a little bit different. It's it's otherworldly and takes you to another another place, as Ulf was was uh, <laughs> was inferring earlier. But any, well, I'll let you guys have the floor. Or anything jump out at you about? I guess this set list, whether you're at the show or not. Yeah, this was night two um, at Blues Fest, so. Uh, I wasn't there. I'd have to look back at the schedule. I can't remember if there was anybody after them that night or not. Yeah, um, yeah, there was. That's why they couldn't play an encore. Right. Gotcha. I figured the, it was it was something to do with festival stuff to mm. to not have have an encore. But uh, all of you would have preferred them to just play th a three hour set just to. Uh, well, I was, take, with, take over I, was the night. To, I was ready to drive to Sydney to see them again, without a doubt, 800 Ks, no problem. But uh, yeah, both shows were sold out immediately and, and yes. Melbourne is sold out as well. So otherwise, 
so I met two deadheads, like like a couple from San Francisco, and she said she'd seen 500 gigs of the Grateful Dead and basically moved from New York to San Fran just to be closer to the Grateful Dead and and created her life around them and hung out with them and and so did he and and they came to the Blues Fest specifically to see Tedeschi Trucks Band and so have a few other musicians that I've seen and they drove on they saw both shows of course and they drove on down to or flew on I don't know to Sydney to see the next shows and I realized that and I think that's why I joined the Swamp family because I think there's something different about this band that is beyond music that is beyond skill that is beyond beauty that's got I don't know I don't know what it is I I, I always thought the deadheads they were just drug taking whatever crazies but they were not or at least that maybe wasn't what this is i don't know I, uh, but it can it, become it, that and it can become that for some people but that's not the core would have probably i think that's I, not the core yeah of yeah. even what deadheads are all about from what i gather i'm i'm a swamp family person you know like yeah. that i i come from more like the the beatles classic rock and 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 eminem from the suburbs and the 90s and all this kind of stuff world you know millennial mm. stuff more than mm. like even a deadhead uh, mm. you know but it's it always is interesting to hear people's where people come to ttb from and that's sort of like they really do bring people together in a lot of ways whether you were a deadhead an allman brothers fan a Derek trucks band fan a susan tedeschi fan or, or just a fan of classic rock or blues or slide guitar like just use this always there's really is something for everyone you could come to this mm. band from any sort of and it seems like a lot of like even like people who are into heavier music, especially if you're yeah. a drummer, like Ooh. metal drummers love TTB from everything they, they, they I understand. They did a 10 minute, 10 minute double drum solo on Saturday night. Uh, who, who was there, Stephen or you guys? I, I don't know. But 10 minutes, they were battling the drums. And that's difficult to pull off. It's no longer the 70s. And they did pull it off. It was really good. They're so good. I mean, who can pull that off? Ten minute double drum solo. It's ridiculous. And it they made it work. It was it was melodic. I mean, that's not that it's insane. I don't know how they do it. Whatever it's, they do, bang. What I say it's 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 I think maybe what you even meant is it's what it is is it's rhythmic and I think and it's a duet. And it's a rhythmic duet, and that's really what sustains me as a as a fan of listening as a music listener. I think even more so than I let's say the, the the average like drum solo during a rock show is the fact that there's two of them communicate with each other, and there is a rhythmic element that's that and a groove and a beat, but also the individual expression and the moments where you're in anticipating what are they going to do next, in between notes and in between the 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 when they're speaking to each other through their drums it's a, it's a super a super cool thing and a special thing and of course it it always makes me think of you know jmo and butch and almond brothers stuff as well like the the communication and and the drumming from the, i'm not a drumming expert i can't speak to the intricacies of of the of the drummers i just know i like it yeah and there's a lot oh, yeah. of jazz in there sorry guy yeah <laughs> Oh, no, I was just going to say, yesterday to the Sydney show, I brought a very good friend of mine who's a drummer, and, and we used to play in the band together in the past. And um, he is also, you know, uninitiated with Tedeschi Trucks bands um, before the show. And he was so absolutely fascinated with the two drummers and the dynamics between them. And I think that that was the main thing that he was watching the whole show is the drummers. Um, but yeah, it just speaks to the the level of musicianship, really. And and I mean, I think kind of reflecting on what uh, Wolf was saying earlier about, uh, 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 you know, just being uh, uh, in awe. And I think especially people like us who have been around music for decades and have been to so many live shows and seen so many different bands, I think that we recognized how unique it is what Tedeschi Trucks Band are doing. And I mean. And it's it's not just having twelve musicians musicians on stage, but it's having twelve musicians that are completely dedicated to the song itself. And uh, um, I think it speaks volumes to the the leadership of of Susan and Derek. And they have uh, the most understated leadership in the sense that you know they uh, they're, they're clearly the ones directing the whole show, but at the same time they work so hard to make sure that everyone shines around them. 
and that seemed to get everyone in the band want to to contribute as much as they can towards the greater whole which is the music and 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 i think that that and you know because they do that they can actually they got to the place where they they can build dynamics in a way that i just haven't seen other bands do and and they're complete master of dynamics and building a song up bringing it down and then building it back up again and that also goes back to the other point that that, that uh, someone made earlier about how they start shows very gradual which is very different than most bands that just put their hard rocker at start and then sometimes kind of they do that too Oh yeah, absolutely. But they don't have to, so they, they don't rely on that in order to build the dynamic in the show. So uh, they're just as comfortable to start slow and, and 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 slowly build it up, and and it's just wonderful to see. It really is. That is all so well said, and I think everyone who who gets gets this band and understands this un, understands what you're saying, and and that's just yeah, it's just so well articulated, and and we all on this call get that, but. I feel like I could be talking to any fan who we all kind of, and that's the special thing. I think even Alf was sort of insinuating is like that special like uh, connection between the fan and the other fans and the music and the band. Like honestly, like like talking to Gabe and and being lucky enough to talk to Kebby uh, for episode 100. Like they are Tedeschi Trucks band fans too of. Derek and Susan of their music of them as people. So it really isn't very different for me in some ways in terms of like the energy and, and the vibe talking to like you guys, as it was and is talking to someone in TTB who works for TTB. We all just are here to appreciate and like serve the music. And that just seems to be what makes this like more special than I guess a lot of like other musical communities out there, which I can't speak to. And that's all apples and oranges. And you can't really compare and contrast these things, but this is the best uh, music and community. Mm -hmm. Not perfect, but the best. <laughs> Certainly. No, nothing nothing tops the music. I want to share some of Guy's uh, photos. You, I grabbed a bunch of those off the the inter interwebs. Um, so did they had they had to add a second uh show in city when was that show added because i saw it sold out and then i saw the second show sold out they added the the sixth which is a few hours guy you gotta go you gotta get you gotta get on you on the road soon we're how far are we away away no it's um we are four hours and 10 minutes from uh, uh opening time and i and i'm about 10 minutes walk from there uh, i have another friend uh uh joining me today and he is a, a guitarist he's an amazing slide guitarist himself and he's a very hard working guitarist trying to make an actual living off of it and you know doing a lot of tutoring playing in a lot of pubs and all that i used to play with him a while ago a while back and derek trucks is his biggest inspiration and he couldn't get tickets to the first show he missed out on the pre-sale and then i i managed for the second show to 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 get us really good tickets and and, and he couldn't be more excited and i'm you know I'm, i i love to go to these shows with friends and and also experience it through their eyes as well which is which is always kind of adds to the fun so uh but i have two and a half hours until i'm meeting up with him so plenty of time that's super cool and i'm ex excited for you guys i'm going to ask a question that is almost obligatory and also going to be appreciated by anyone who's listening to this live um will you or will you find someone to record the show or stream the show live on mixler app so people can listen to, to it <laughs> find someone or i don't even know what the the uh the you know streaming or whatever the uh recording and gear and all that stuff is the policies but yeah i don't know if you've ever used that that app like uh, uh no i'm, I'm not it's all okay. familiar with it's it unfortunately okay. and, it's okay. and, and i i don't know how much the the little microphone in my samsung would do justice to yeah. to what's on stage to be honest I, um i think that i think i well Alf was speaking to to join this the swamp family i did see uh something about um they are working towards getting getting more of their soundboard recordings available and for purchase or for part of you know the swamp family things daniel marino mike madison songwriting is also a huge part of antiques what makes ttb so good yeah the songwriting uh certainly uh for sure um oh i was going to share some pictures of the 
what you whatever whatever the hell I got here. I'm I'm excited for Oath, man. You are new. That is so cool. It's like it's like when you watch it's like when like someone didn't watch like Breaking Bad or never seen a Seinfeld episode or whatever the hell it is, then you're like watching it with them. It's like you're kind of living vicarious. I'm I'm excited for your your journey. You have to message me and keep me posted on oh, I'm checking out Milwaukee from 2014 on the archive app. This is such a great version of let me get by. It sounds different than it does in 2023. You're you're gonna go down such a fun rabbit hole because this this band gets uh better, but the old recordings never get old. Like they're you know totally amazing stuff all around here. Hmm. What do we got here? That's uh oh, I, oh yeah. this I think this is Paige Paige's picture. She's she I don't know if anyone pro probably knows Paige from the uh, am I saying it? Saying her name from the, one of the Tedeschi Trucks Facebook groups here. She's a flight attendant who's traveling all around. Uh, Lucky her. Uh, yeah, that the was world the world. I got a chance to see these shows. She's in the mm. air right now, actually. Mm. <laughs> but this is her photo of Susan and Derek looking. This is a great photo. See, I don't, I don't really care if, uh, all the time if something is like, you know, super shot by a professional but just like the expressions and the moment and the feel of what this show is is totally captured here like they're all, they're impressed by each other uh susan and derek it, like their reactions are, are genuine for each other again it's like it comes back to like them being fans of each other and fans of the music and excited for what they're gonna hear next i think sometimes like susan forgets a lyric or forgets she's there or forgets to play or sing just Cause she's so mesmerized by what Derek's doing and it's all totally understandable how that could, <laughs> that could happen. And it all, it happens the other way too, with everyone in the band, they can become kind of mesmerized with each other, I think. And you got to remember you're a, uh, it's like, a, it's like uh, sports. It's like, you can't, you can't become a spectator when, when LeBron's dribbling and dancing around everyone and then dunking on people, you gotta be ready for a pass and be focused and be playing your, your part as a teammate too. But certainly can be appreciative oh, he is was that, good man he was good like madison this is this Woo! this is this is your photo uh guy yeah that's from last night i believe yeah close up of mike very cool belting out lyrics oh There's and one. that would have been volunteered slavery i can even i can even tell you he You're like a pro. Are man. you? Are you? Are you a semi-pro amateur photographer or anything like that? Come on, guy, you are. I I was just very lucky to be up on the front row. That's the Whoa. only reason why these are good photos. Woo. But they find no these yes. photographers hunt these moments, like certain during certain songs. I found if you know the band, and you know music, and you know the songs, you can can hunt down. Uh, Hunt down these Magic. moms. This is a good one. This is a great one. And it's Magic just with one. my with my with my little Samsung, not with no way. Uh, um wow, guy, awesome. Yeah, these are cool. Moment. Yeah, Alicia, Susan. Magic. Yeah. And and, and, and just to say how, how I ended up over there in the front row, I um um I I got on to pre-sale and I think I got really good seats, something like fourth row or something like that um every now and again I, I would just check the Ticketmaster website every few every couple of days just to see if something is going to pop up because i know how it goes and sometimes they kind of release tickets later and all of that and one day i log in uh, and that's after it was already sold out and it says there are tickets and i go to the ticket map and it's basically the entire front row almost was available and no other seats. I never in, in, in so many years of buying concert tickets, never saw anything like it. I immediately bought front row tickets and I then saw that they put the Blues Fest touring put online that they released a bunch of band tickets. So I guess these are tickets that the band was holding off for family and all of that. But then they realized they're not going to need all of these. So there was this incredible release of front row tickets for both of the sydney shows and of course within a few hours it was all gone um but those of us who were quick enough uh, got front row uh, so i have front row tonight as well which is incredibly Damn, lucky and this is and, and and this is face so they don't do here what they do in the us where they do the sort of uh um, um uh, officially scalp tickets where you need to where you kind of buy from Ticketmaster a thousand dollars to be up front or this is you know i mean 
um, it, it's still, you know, not it, it not cheap, but worth every 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 cent. And I, it's just incredibly lucky um, uh, uh, that 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 I was able to to um, to get that when it was out. And then I sold the old tickets very easily, of course. Yeah, we're all. That's why I'm here, living vicariously through you. So this is since Sydney night one. This photo. That's right. And this is, I'm guessing this is It Ain't Fair with Alicia up, up front, I assume. Correct. This is, I like, I like this. This is good. This is like some good feminine energy we're getting with the women up front for this song. That's something that we can almost, is almost like forgotten to see the, the, the women up front, you know, it'd be cool. Almost like see Susan, Alicia and, and, uh, and, um, and Elizabeth, like all up front, like, you know, doing some kind of like something with just them even and or just them and Derek or just them and one drummer there's so many like that's a, that's a fun thing that that about this band that I'm sure Ulf has already observed and and is going to dive down the more rap the rabbit hole and appreciate as you listen from song to song and watch different vote uh videos is seeing the different combinations and the different lineups like that this band does and you notice that more when you're at a show sometimes even more than listening because the sound is always so full. So sometimes when you're surprised, oh, there's only six people up there. There's only five people for that. There's no horns. There's no vocalist. But when you see them leave and walk back on, it kind of reminds you of how talented the people are on who are leaving the stage and how talented the people on are because it's just, it just becomes something that's that's different. Also, it's totally powerful. But, that, but that's a fun thing to to dive into as well. Yeah, this is this is such a cool shot. Gabe, Kevy, Horns, super cool. The the first time I saw them live, which that would have been 2016 when they were here for Blues Fest, that was the last time they were in Australia. Um, and my mo that my the, the the my most vivid memory, the thing from that show, the mental picture that I remember the most is Elizabeth getting into the trombone and just having a blast, and just seeing how much she enjoyed it. I remember years like for some reason like more than anything else that's something that, that that kind of stayed with me and i just love watching her play um she's just um she she's she's an, she's a fantastic uh uh musician but she just has so much time she's so much fun when she's up there yeah and i think that's like good for the band and has been a good element to bring to the band a little bit more of a party like because that's that's i i always talk about tedeschi trucks band like kind of at their core in a lot of ways they are just kind of like the most amazing bar band ever like if you want a band to play honky tonk woman or a blues song or a rock and roll traditional song like who's gonna do a better job than than this whether they whether it's with all 12 or some combination of whatever it is like like they're kind of like a a, a, a you know a bar band in a lot of ways but the best one i forgot where i was going with that thought but I'm losing myself in the images here. The, the trombone <laughs> and the fun element, I think. Oh, yeah, the party element. Yeah, the, yeah. The Elizabeth dancing and the partying and bringing that. Because Derek can be, obviously, we all know, be a little bit more of a stoic, a stoic, uh, a stoic character on stage, but not all the time. And you could tell by how much smiling and laughter and the interaction between the bands. And, and especially they did, a, get, they did a solo together. Derek and and her, I don't know. On I think it was on Saturday. Space, I, space on Space Captain Encore. We were. You mentioned you mentioned that they do that regularly, and oh my god, the bloody hilarious! Not I mean, every show. Pe not every show. Oh, there's a good one of, of Ooh, uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> she yeah she. I think I asked her one time after a show before a show. I'm like, do you remember your solos? And she's like, no. Like again, like they're like it's every everything is kind of like the music is special to them, but there is a sort of matter of factness to to it. It is kind of like reflex muscle memory, like sort of like very natural to them at this point. Obviously, they rehearse and practice and all that stuff, but like super talented people. That's a good one. Cool mm -hmm. one here. Well, it kind well, of sh like shows a bit of that communication and 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 how and and Derek's quiet leadership. So he just oh. kind of would slowly walk towards Gabe or slowly walk towards the horn section, and everyone kind of knows exactly where to lean into and all of that. It's um, it's just lo so lovely to see how they communicate. Yeah, even with Gabe, like the being obviously out of focus and Stroby or whatever, it's it's it's, it's <laughs> still kind of in, it's still a very interesting photograph, and everything else is in pretty 
pretty sharp focus and like yeah it's it looks like a painting i've lost my mind uh what else we got here mike these are all good thank you for taking these and, and let me share these mike mike on the mic susan on the guitar playing the playing the les paul brandon Morocco, Mike, uh, uh, Mark, Mark on Mor uh, Maracas. What song could that be? That could be. Uh, I think this was Volunteered Slavery again. Right. Yeah. Mike up front. Yeah. African kind of Southern Hemisphere. I, I, I can also tell that because if you if you notice on the right hand side they have their stage clock and it says ten fifteen. Right. And so that was towards the end of the second set. <laughs> right. You guys are ever everyone, everyone's such good good detectives that's another thing like <laughs> derek i think derek had like in terms of the set lists and all this other stuff like you have to respect the fans because we know we know we know people are on top of like you know of a lot you know every everything Alf, Alf, you're gonna hear one note by derek and you're gonna know you know what song is coming next it's it'll it'll just it's gonna happen all fairly quickly but they they'll they keep you uh you know they keep it fresh every every tour every leg of tour there's teases and new songs and surprises and and i think that's something that's coming into the band more as their catalog grows and live catalog grows is the idea of like they can't play everything so like you got to get the one way to do it is to give little teases and nods to to whether what, it's their what, own songs or whether it's an almond brothers blue sky riff or if they're not going to play the whole song like that's always but what, a part of the what they did unlike many other bands and blues fest is they played two completely different sets on a saturday and on the sunday so a lot of the other bands played exactly the same set on a lot of them had two or three gigs and they played exactly the same set and i thought man you guys know that there's quite a few of us who i stayed for the whole five days there's quite a few people who stayed for three so i thought that was uh, a bit average whereas these guys two completely different sets so they really in it for the music there's no doubt about it they want to showcase their music because they could have they could have played the same set twice like so many others did and there was no way they did that and i went yeah they th these guys have something to say and they say it they have to say it. they can't they can't do any differently and i think that's yeah they're, they're, they're true artists true poets true true musicians in the highest in the highest level and then they'd always do it whether they play in front of 50 people or 50,000, they would play the same quality without a doubt. No, they, they do. Cause they play smaller. They play, play and sometimes play smaller shows. And there's this, there's no, there's no let down. There's no mailing no. it in that there's, there's just, isn't anything, anything like that. And mm -hmm. in terms of the, the set list, like I think we were talking about on some episode back, how, they don't re they will not really play very many repeats over the course of like a two night run or a three night run or some kind of residency maybe you'll get a few repeats but again like you're saying predominantly fresh two completely different shows and even when they travel from city to city it will be factored in like yeah maybe they'll have some over overlap if they want to play a song for whatever reason but like it gets factored in because they know that their fans are traveling from city to city to see shows. So even when they travel to a new city, like the previous set list from like a different city, that's going to, they want to consider variety as a consideration for that. Even when they leave town, let alone play like a, a festival. Like that's why fans, that's why those people were there to see Tedeschi trucks band who you guys encountered, like who were there just to see them or specifically to see them because we know, and they know that, you know, you're going to get two very different shows, even if there were overlaps, even if they played the same, even if they played the same set list twice, you would be getting two different shows. You wouldn't be, you'd be so in the moment. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter in a, in, in a lot of ways, but yeah, they, they keep it fresh. And that's the tribute, you know, can be attributed, you know, largely to, and a lot of credit goes to Derek, who, from what I gather, creates the, the set list with input and feedback and discussion but you know ultimately i think he's crafting it based on all the factors that have probably come up on this podcast over the course of its existence uh with people speculating on what what goes into it like that's that's the number one like conversation i feel like a, a top uh, conversation is like everyone wants to, what people want to hear when they go to a show like they bet i hope they play this i hope they play that 
you know, people fantasizing about what songs they should they should cover and whatnot. You know, I I I, I want to say something on that, which is, you know, uh, you know, like I said, I follow a number of different bands, and 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 in most shows I go to listen to, there's an element of, oh, I wish, I really want to hear this or that song. I don't have that same feeling with Tedeschi Trucks Band, even though I love all the songs and I I, I just don't I'm, I'm not going in with particular songs in mind because I just know they're going to blow my mind, whatever they're going to play. Um, so I'm kind of at, just, I'm kind so of at this. I'm kind of at the same point. Like it's not, sometimes I'll be listening to maybe I'll be listening to some I'll be obviously will be listening to the sure. band's music like leading up to a show a few days before and I'll be like oh I hope they play this but then like two days later I don't even remember that I'm already on to something else and or like I'm still listening to it and I just forgot the thought and by the yeah. time they hit the stage you're just so excited for anything and like you said you know it's gonna be awesome and there's no there's just no mailing it in. Um, yeah. What do you think about all this, Stephen? I want to. I want to go to go to you and make sure so you you get you get some some thoughts out. If you got anything to to add to all of our crazy rambles about this band, no, I can I completely agree. Um, you know, I think it's awesome to be able to go to a show um, and not really care what what they play. You just know you're going to have an amazing time, an amazing experience here, an amazing set, night in, night out, uh, regardless of you know, what your favorite song is or, or what you think you want to hear. Um, and, and that's why people keep, keep coming back. I think, um, part of the reason, because they know it's going to be great every single time. And it's a lot of fun, uh, to kind of experience that with people as, as everybody's said. Yeah. The, 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 the one thing that sometimes does come up is like, Oh, I want to just hear the thing that they haven't played in a while. The, the original that some originals that they, they haven't played in a while. And that's a thing that that you know sometimes some hardcore fans want to hear but um you might get that you know you don't know that's part of like the surprise is like there's a there's a lot of element of surprise at tedeschi like it really cut like it, the show covers all the range of the emotions like and the whole like maybe even maybe i'm reaching but like human experience on a lot of levels like is is captured by the music and what even goes on between the dynamic of all the people on the stage teamwork and humor and and sometimes mistakes and overcoming and improv impro improvisation whether it be a solo or, or whether it be derek fixing his guitar on stage and restringing it during a, a you know a thing or 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 even like even when in that the beacon the lights went out in the middle of life was life uh life is crazy when mike was singing and the band was playing and they just kept going because the audio there was nothing wrong with it and totally you know, just all these things you never know really what you're gonna see at a ttb show and in a, in, a, in a fun exciting way that i don't think you get at other other shows not not like not like this certainly especially at other shows where you're gonna you kind of know that know the set list i should talk more smack about other artists who do that no that's okay I, I get it, you know, I get it. It's, but you know, people want to hear the hit. People want to hear the hits, and when you get out there and the and you play that hit song, it's super fresh and exciting to that audience. And I think, you know, that's how that I can't I can't imagine what it's like to be a legendary artist or a super famous musician or whatever to have like an iconic song be playing that. Like, does it get old? <laughs> what do you guys think? Does Layla get old for Eric Clapton or does he enjoy it? Playing it? Both versions? I don't know. It, it's hard to say, but 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 also it's it's uh, it's also about what what about Clapton's band um as well? Because it's uh, you know, and and whether I, I mean I, I, I think it must be boring for a professional musician to play exactly the same songs night in, not out. Um in terms of there are you know uh, as as an artistic outlet but again I, I i really don't know um but um i i would think that it it would be much more interesting for the band to not have to do it um it's interesting to think of back about the uh, uh derek's early days in the allman brothers because i think that there was tensions around that when he first joined from memory uh um i think that that, that was when just before dicky left and then they started to play much more varied sets but um yeah there, there's 
the, the, it's an interesting one. I know he prefers uh, to rehearse and he prefers all the musicians to be there. Mm. <laughs> That's another thing. Everyone to show up on on time is also is also a helpful thing from what I under, understand is a preference of 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 Derek's. Um what else should we 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 talk about is I guess uh either Sydney or or or, or Melbourne or I might do another recap if you if because guy you're going to to the show in a couple of hours and whatnot so maybe we, right. we do another one and then i think the band has some time off after that so i could we could do that maybe this week or something like that and get a few more people they'll need to, that to to get out of the jet lag and get reaccustomed to uh u.s right. time mm -hmm. <laughs> one thing i wanted to mention there's an interesting difference uh in attending a show in australia compared to in the u.s uh which is in australia if there are seats people will sit down um, so the, the, the Sydney and Melbourne shows are in theaters and absolutely beautiful theaters. Um, but it is a bit of a struggle because it, you know, there's certainly songs and moments in the show that I really want to dance and I do my best to dance in my seat. But I think we, we, we were able in, in, in the Sydney show to get everyone up and dancing up in the encore, but in, uh, in the Melbourne show, um, um, I know they were quite strict, the security and all of that on, on, on making sure that people sit down so it was it's a bit funny and 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 obviously having seen the desky trucks in the us and 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 that's not even a question i think in most uh sort of venues so, so yeah it's it's an interesting one um yeah the, and, the, and I, the, have, no, I was just gonna say that that's the sitting standing dancing it it that's been a, a huge a hot topic sure. of discussion and conversation amongst uh fans and again like you are saying it does vary from venue to venue and 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 i guess culture to culture and place to place but um most standing and dancing is is how how it should be you know i i ideally you know but yeah maybe, different topic for, for a different day maybe to tie in with that one um i mean we said they did play a 45 minute encore on saturday and it doesn't seem too surprising for maybe americans or europeans but at blues fest there were hardly any encores because of the tight schedule and even the last band of the night normally they turned the light on and got the sweepers and security to kick everyone out of the tent the moment the show was over so it was not a given that there would be an encore at all. And they played till after midnight. So I reckon they were the only band to play after midnight and the only band to have a 45 minute encore. So they must have such star power. And Peter Noble, the organizer of the Blues Fest, who's run it for most of the 35 years it's been going, he basically said it's the best band in the world. So that's, that's uh, all right, we take that. So the fact that they did that 45 minute encore and that, that bloody security and the sweepers didn't come and the lights didn't come on, it's normal for Europeans, it's normal. I mean, I met a, someone who, who saw a friend of mine from Barcelona, saw them 16 years ago in Barcelona. And of course in Spain, I mean, you can't play a gig without a few encores. I mean, it's not possible. And without everyone going crazy and dancing and, and so forth. So it's a different party atmosphere. Um, but here it's a little bit more reserved, let's put it that way. And uh, so I think they really pulled something special in, in, that, in that encore and playing past midnight. And they obviously pushed security to the limit. And they would have played on. I, I have no doubt they would have played on. <laughs> they wanted to. I mean... <laughs> So yeah, they do, they do. They do when they're in New York City. When they're in other places, they do drop into other gigs and jazz clubs and late night things. That's they it. love playing oh that God. much. I don't even going. know if I, I can't even. Yeah, I don't know where they get the energy or the the whatever. I want to go lay on the couch and chill out. And I kind of had you know enough at it. But they, no, I it's it, it's so cool. Um, I was looking at the the set list from uh that I see is, is signed that. 
guy. You got the set list signed by. Uh, mm, it, it's Derek? it's not mine, but not I do have a, a, a. But I I do have a good story about that. It's my picture of of of, of someone else's set list, but I do have gotcha. a, a short uh, an interesting sure. story about it. Uh, which is when uh, you know how I earlier I I said about how they. Uh, released a bunch of front row tickets kind of by surprise. Um, and after I after I got my own, I, I immediately remembered uh, someone who posted on Reddit saying uh, he and his uh, uh, soon-to-be wife are going to be in Australia for their honeymoon. And Tedeschi Trucks is uh, their biggest love and all of that. And they uh, realize that they're going to be in Sydney in their last night. And, and, and it all lined up, except that it's all super sold out. They couldn't get even. And, and they were desperate to get, you know, whatever tickets, however bad and all of that. Um, so I was able to actually alert him in time to get front row tickets, which was just, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm sure he thought it was some sort of elaborate scam up until the last minute, because that stuff never happens. And I, and I tried to convince him that, look, I'm not scamming you. This is for real. <laughs> and, um, and, 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 and so, I, you know, I, I said, uh, uh, w w it was really nice to see, to meet them and have a chat and, and they're, um, um, in from Atlanta and, and their last night of the honeymoon and, they were just over the moon. And at the end of the show, someone from the band staff came out and, and I guess someone in the band knew about it or heard about it because they came out with those signed set lists and a bunch of other gifts. And it was so lovely. Uh, they were really surprised. And, um, and, and, and I was just so happy to, to kind of see that. And, you know, you're talking about earlier about how kind they are and how nice they are. And this is just, it was a case that I guess it, it, the word got, in, got, got to them that there's a couple on their honeymoon and they just decided to do something nice. And, and I'm sure that for them, that's something that they're going to remember all their life. And for the band, that was really not a lot of effort when you think about it. So it's, it's just so wonderful. And they were so happy. And, uh, uh, and, and then I just got a, a, a quick photo of that. And then we, we all got a photo together and all of that. But uh, yeah, that was a nice little story. And, and, and I hope now we have contact. So hopefully when I'm in the US, I'll, I'll see them in, in one of the what in one, one show down the road in the future. Who knows? Very cool. Thank you for sharing that. Even down to like their signatures, there's such a consistency and a professionalism and an effort level of effort that go, <laughs> Alf is laughing. That go, that goes into into everything everything they do. And I know that because I've people share this stuff on social media. You can see things that have been signed and set lists, and I got ones behind me that have that same Derek and Susan signature and like. That's a quite an uh, Susan's got that down. There's a lot of there's a lot going that that's a hard one to uh to duplicate her signature and she signs there, it there's as more Su Susan Tedeschi trucks. There's more variation in that simple Derek signature than the more complex Susan signature. <laughs> per 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 perhaps. Yeah, when um, when you look at the two, yeah. Yeah, this is an awesome awesome set list in itself on uh mm. It's it's so strange because for me it is right now Friday, April fifth, in Los Angeles, and I'm looking at a set list that says Friday, April fifth. <laughs> Dude, you brought me a set list back from the future. Yeah, I'm the doc. What is the what is the percent THC in this vape? I'm getting set lists from the the set list from the future here now here my dear ain't that something everybody's got to to change sometime until you remember which is a show stop where circles had to cry and probably back to circles and then into pass a right. uh to close out set one set two last night in the rain let me get by it ain't fair outside woman blues gravity just won't burn leaving trunk angel into sugary uh i want more bex bolero and then i can't make you love me and and show me um, there there yeah. are a couple of changes they didn't do last night in the rain, and they started set two with "I Can Make You Love Me" rather than the encore. And then there was also uh, "Volunteered Slavery" um, after and connected to "Leave, Leave in Trunk," which was nice. So the 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 set two finished with those three uh, medleys, really, um, yeah. which was really nice. It says there was a guest, and I think I can guess right. who the guest was based on the. It says Dom. And then there, where the hell was it? Oh, damn it. Here we go. I'm going to find it here. 
Yeah, I'm, right. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. So this Dom set. Turner is a slide guitarist from uh, an Australian blues band called the Backsliders, uh, and Susan made a mention when she invited him on stage that he, that Derek played with him the first time Derek was in Australia twenty years ago. Um, so I'm um, guessing maybe the maybe the Backsliders opened for Derek Truck's band or something, but yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. But um, but yeah, he was fantastic and he did very well. I appreciate that you that you shared and knew as much as you did to to fill in fill in that gap. That's appreciated. Oh man, we got to find someone a recording or a video or someone who's got something from this. Like that's super, what kind of slide is that? It almost looks like a. Uh, yeah, he had some metal slides on. Yeah, yeah. and uh, but it almost looks like they, a they were just good. interesting. I'm not sure. No, I I think that might just look in the photo, but it just seemed like a metal sort of slider, right. and um, they were just doing dueling slides, which was lovely. Yeah, no, it like it's it it like I like Derek always has a sense of that, but it is it is cool to to hear Derek with slide players, whether it be Warren or. Um, or uh, Jerry Douglas, or or Dom Dom here. What was his last last name again? Turner. Turner. I was like gonna write that down as if I can't just like go back and like check it on the on the episode. St did I sh share this one already? Dan Daniel Marino says uh, stacked uh, set list. Yeah, that was a, is is and was a stacked set list. I'm gonna try to grab it back up. Th is this uh, which venue is this one here? That's the State Theater. It's it's absolutely gorgeous venue inside. It's this uh, is all Sydney. Very... This, this is also Sid Sydney. Sydney. Damn. Yeah. Cool. All, yeah. All these shadows are from the Sydney show. Got it. Yeah, and that's in where you had it. Including the yeah, including the pick which uh, Susan played the whole show and and then tossed to me at the end, which was very lovely of her. That was and the one. So that that's that, something. Yeah, that I, I cherish. Yeah, I saw the uh the the picture of the pick also that so that was she tossed that one to you, this one right here. Yeah, I figured that it was, was for that other one. that wasn't for the couple from Atlanta. No, that was for me. So that was um that that was really nice. Like I said, I was up the front, and I think that she saw how much I was I was partying in my seat and dancing sitting down the whole show <laughs> and um and she just uh, at the encore everyone got up and so I was kind of right up at the stage and and she made eye contact and and kind of tossed it specifically to me which is very nice and uh um yeah so now that's something to cherish and I don't think that she actually tossed any other ones that I could see so as far as I know, she played with this one the, the entire Sydney show. At least that's the story I'm telling myself. So I am um, have I have the <laughs> image an extra extra close up and the and the quality looks pretty decent and it looks like it's like crackly and used. Am I am I overthinking this? Do all picks look like this an no. extra extra close up, or does this definitely look like it was strumming on any hat? Was any I don't know if any hat was in the set list, but whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever song was. Uh, was was from that is super cool because like that there is something to be said to you know for knowing that you got a game used game worn pick slide whatever it was straight out of the uh the any day solo or the uh the susan yes we will solo versus getting it handed hands of the gold right versus versus bobby <laughs> t's handing it to you in an alley at 1 a.m or whatever not that that's not special uh too but but yeah, the, the game use stuff means stuff. It all means stuff. Images are not images. Um, objects have uh, what do they call it? Energy, spiritual qualities, things like that. Am I am I getting too new age, new agey on this podcast no, at this point? True, but I'm coming around true. that objects do. It's not like obviously life and nature and all that stuff we know definitely does. Or that's that's easy to to comprehend. But I think objects do. Objects carry certain energy. Especially when we, we give we them carry meaning. With us, we carry with us so much uh, passion, so much energy. And then these are the little objects that kind of uh, 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 take off some of those pieces and have like a, a physical manifestation of our passion. So it's it's the passion that we put into it that uh, that, that keep it that, that, that gives it uh, 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 this the special magic that it absolutely has. Right, people give the give the objects the meaning and the energy, but it's it sticks with it even if it's passed from from person to, to person here. Mariah's laughing at me at ha ha alley at one a.m. getting a slide. Hey, whatever you got to do to to get a slide, and everybody who 
wants wants one somewhat badly it seems like that that i've observed seems pretty deserving and seems to love this band and very often of course it is like guitar players who who prefer or want to want to get a slide it's it's essential it's essential uh ttb collectible set list slide pick um poster you gotta have at least a poster what else what, what else is essential TTV. Oh, there's a beautiful um there's a beautiful poster that they did for the australian tour by the way absolutely gorgeous I artwork I... uh I, I haven't seen it online i've only seen it uh yeah, well... in the shows I, I did buy one uh and it's but it's home in melbourne um, um not here with me but it's absolutely gorgeous um and i'm gonna frame it of course yeah richie walter says uh What's up, Richie? This says it's a right of pet. Yeah, what's up, everyone? Thank you for hanging, Richie, Daniel, Stormy, Ulf, and Mariah. And it's a right of passage getting the slide. I'm assuming he is referring to. Yeah, I'm thinking about what else is essential. I mean, obviously now they're passing out the chips and at the state shows, and then you got cups and. But like broadly speaking, and to the specific Tedeschi Trucks band uh, items, like yeah, there's a handful of, of things that are that are uh sort of essential yeah super cool stuff all around what else should we cover what else should we discuss we've been going for an hour and a quarter we could talk about this band all all day i it's funny because you, you it's almost like you all remind me of other people who've been on the podcast like uh who love ttb like i can kind of like oh you kind of remind me of this person like and, you know, i don't know everybody uh there's there's so much overlap and connection between between fans and the band and all that good stuff though for sure yeah you've been saying the passion is what what is sort of captured maybe even in 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 the articles and i think it's the passion that is captured in in the concerts and in their music and it's it's that it's that depth of passion and um quality and craftsmanship and music and the human condition as you said covering pretty much everything of the human condition uh from the good to the bad to the ugly and mostly love and the ability to share that with an audience and to make it audible and palpable that I think is unrivaled, frankly. And I don't think that's me. I think it's them. I don't think it's it's me liking their music more than other people. I think it's them making it audible more than other bands or palpable. I think that's what it is. It has to be. I think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> No, I, I I agree because because it's like you're saying it doesn't matter like how where you come. It's more like you just have to be exposed to it. It's not that people don't yeah. like this music or people are resistant. I've never played this the, the band for someone they're like repulsed by the music. Whereas some music maybe people can actually be sort of repulsed by because I guess with any sort of taste or subjective art or any subjective beauty, even whatever it is like you're attracted to something so maybe you can be repulsed by something but no one's like repulsed by ttb everyone's like at the very least i always say appreciative of it on some level and and usually I, I goes beyond. all my friends telling them to check out this band because i'm I, and i've never done that before like if people ask me i give them advice but this was unsolicited advice and i said no nah, you you listen to this because if you don't you miss out if ever they play near you you make sure you go it's a once in a lifetime experience you have to go and i've told everyone even the ones who didn't want to hear and i felt i have people because they, they're not being played on the radio i listen to a lot of music i never heard their name so other people don't know them and i felt obliged to share that because it's such a unique experience the majority of people i've brought to shows have been to a second show also mm. at least yeah. with with me or at the very least if i invited them back that's probably why they haven't been back just because like they're doing living their life and they're not a crazy fan but if i invited them back or just said yo you should come to the show like, all right i'm down they were cool yeah, whatever like people are always like they just need to be ex exposed to the band that's why we're, I'm, I'm starting to get into the conversation of like oh when is when are they going on saturday night live and when is the super bowl halftime show happening like and and working on on the set list for those for those uh for those events in my mind a little bit don't be surprised be ready as a fan <laughs> as a fan <laughs> cool good stuff anything else we should cover or talk about i i will again i think we will i'll see what i can do and talk we could talk offline about 
recapping the show tonight. Uh, Guy, why don't you tell me about like, uh, I mean, just looking ahead to tonight, you're, what, you're, what you're feeling, what you're, you're thinking. You kind of told me a little bit about you're sitting up front again. Like, you must be super excited 10 minutes away. Or I, I would be, it's, you're going to be, it's, dude, you should be, you shouldn't oh. be talking to me. You should be oh, oh, listening for sound check or somewhere. Oh uh, yeah, good point. I, I, look, I'm 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 extremely excited. At the same time, there's also just a touch of sadness knowing that this is the last show, um, and um, and knowing that most likely I will need to fork out a lot of money to see them again because it will because mostly it means going to the US or or somewhere else. Uh, like I said, it's been eight years since they were here last, so I really really hope that they come back uh, sooner than that. Um, but I'm just uh, I, I'm I'm just I'm looking forward to experiencing it uh, uh, yet again, a new show, and 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 with a new friend, uh, um, uh, and to experience it through his eyes. Like I said, I'm I'm I'm, I'm extremely excited. I cannot wait to do that. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm going to be living vicariously through you. Three Anything and a half else? hours. <laughs> almost, almost, almost time. What about you, Stephen? Off anything else you guys want to? gonna mention or talk about related to the band or whatever no nah, it's been it's been awesome uh, catching up with you guys and hear about everybody's experience well thank you appreciate the time and your dad for the connect what else what else you got uh oh if anything else you want to want to share if anyone wants to plug anything that's that's cool too hopefully it's something that's not you know, <laughs> it could have get me in trouble now it's all good what do you, what, what do you anything you wanted to add all well, as Steve and Guy know, we, we've all decided to live on the far end of the world for a fair part of our life. And it means being far away from a lot of things and people that are very important to us. So the fact that bands come and visit us out here and visit Australia out here is so crucially important for us um, because it's a connection and it's a connection to home and it's a chance to celebrate and to feel that we are connected and i think that's what i experienced more than anything in that concert that i felt connected to life to the world to beauty to music to hope and to the audience we were and to the band actually because they were really there they were so present and they did it for us they they looked at us they did it for themselves they did it for the moment and it this idea of swamp family, I mean, it sounds, I went like, uh, uh, but once you've been to a concert, um, it actually does make sense because, um, it, it, yeah, there is something happening that I find difficult to describe as I, because I haven't experienced it before. I've never been a big fan of any band, even though I love a lot of bands and seen a lot of bands, but I've never been a collector of any band items or anything like that. It's like, it doesn't interest me. But yeah, to come out this far to this far end of the world um, means a lot to us here in Australia, to all the expats who live here, but also to the Australians. And also, we got to remember it's the oldest living culture on earth, uh, 60,000 years of continuous culture. And it's a beautiful country and it's got a lot. There's a lot that can be seen and experienced. So if we can lure them back, Adam, maybe you can you know, do a bit of horse whispering or <laughs> muse or whispering. Um, it 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 is uh, yeah, because it's it's at the moment no one has the money to just travel the world to see a concert, or very few people do. So if they come here, then gee, I'm sure the next uh, yeah they can they can book bigger venues next time. There's no doubt about it. What about Hawaii? Maybe we can meet you halfway or something. That's that okay. Do, yeah. Do, do, uh, Hawaii. Do. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Th I don't know this if they've done American Hawaii. State. Yeah. Yeah, they should. That's yeah, not it, quite as far. <laughs> it's funny to hear you talk about the band and Swamp Fam, and hear you guys all talk about this stuff. Like last episode, there was a we were talking to Gabe. There was a couple of moments where I'm getting emotional. He's playing Billy Joel and pl playing snippets from Soul Sweet Song and these Tedeschi Trucks Band songs that mean so much to me. But you, man, you guys are making me emotional too, talking about how special this band is and this music and all this, and articulating my own feelings and thoughts for me, which is a good thing. I kind of like doing that. I'm sick of my own articulating my own feelings and thoughts. I want to outsource 
that too. That's a fun, a fun experience. Well, you make it possible by making this podcast or thank you, Adam. There's a lot of effort on your side. So it's not Absolutely. easy to put some, pull something off. You've done it for 150 times already. So thank you for creating this. And that's creative energy too. And musicians need an audience and without it, sort of it's it's only half baked isn't it so and and for you to to help us listen to each other and and, and share this joy and and this you know, being so blown away i'm yeah otherwise i think am i crazy or something i'm the only one who's felt this or what and and now i know i'm not it's not me it's it's actually happening so it's good it's really good <laughs> no you are crazy and but you're not the only one and we are all crazy and by that i mean thank you very much for all the kind words and support that really does mean a lot i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna go if i when i go back and listen to this and edit, edit clips i probably will cry and do all that stuff but yeah that's so well said uh so many things all if i appreciate it mariah's ready to go to hawaii hawaii let's go uh, Hawaii, Las Vegas, those would be like sort of feasible for West Coasters like my, myself putting that out there into the universe as well. I'm going to boot you guys out and do my little outro, but we could talk all more for a little bit offline if you want. Steven's probably got to go perform surgeries. God knows, or you got to assist surgery. You got to hold the guy's shoulder while the doctor's cutting it up. I don't know what you what you what you guys are up to. Guys got to get to a show. olf has got to dive into the TTB catalog, archive.org, bookmark that live live music app uh, whatever it, whatever it is and buy all the albums and and merch and S swamp family has a bunch of stuff up there you'll find it all on youtube all the stuff i'm excited you have to keep me posted on your journey but thank you guys again and it's funny because with, without the uh without like every set list it's it's very much easier to go on any sort of tangent i did i have realized that the set list do kind of oh we could like steer the ship a little bit let's dedicate one quarter of it to, you know whatever but then when there's no set lists or or not an exact science it's like because we can definitely ramble and i can ramble about this this band for for uh, a while but thank you guys again and uh let's talk soon and uh have good evenings or days or whatever the hell you might or you're all in Australia, so it's daytime for all y'all enjoy your fucking nighttime here i love it i love it cheers guys Peace. Thank you, Adam. Thank you so much. Well done. You got Thanks it. A lot. So there you go. What was that? Episode 149. Recapping uh, Tedeschi Trucks Band. What was it? Their first four shows in uh, Australia. And we got one more tonight uh, in, uh, in Sydney. Um thank you thank you to, for everyone for joining for hanging out in the chat and all that you guys are so cool this is so much fun uh at tedeschi trucks podcast on instagram please uh subscribe on youtube or whatever platform you listen to podcasts on tedeschi trucks podcast.com for everything related to the show adam .com for everything related to uh, my personal stuff and other projects uh tedeschi trucks band.com that's the band's official website buy tickets to shows buy merch, join the Swamp family, download the app. Thank you to the band. Thank you to the crew. Thank you to the fans, supporters of the podcast. Um, I think that I think I did. I hit everything. Did I get everything? I want to keep 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 going. Actually, no, it'd be, it's always fun to talk to Span. I could do this, do this, this all day, certainly. But I'll let uh, you guys get on with the rest of your your evening and, and days and uh we'll talk soon and hopefully recap uh the final ttb show in in sydney get a do do a separate one for that and maybe get uh get uh what's her name that uh the uh the the, the world traveler flight attendant page who chases chasing ttb around the world on as well but thank you guys again and uh, let's talk soon peace